The search is on for a man who ditched Richland police during the checkpoint chase. Details on what happened ahead. Also, Jackson firefighters have been kept busy with several fires this holiday weekend. The latest was early this morning. 16 WABT News continues right now. The one to watch. This is 16 WAPT News Live at 6. Good morning, everyone. I'm Aaron Pickens. Keegan is off this morning. And I'm Marcus Hunter. College football fans were in heaven over the weekend. The excitement continues today when Ole Miss kicks off their season. I'll have a preview. And uh, you may have fell asleep watching this battle of two heavyweights last night. Notre Dame and Texas needed double overtime to decide a winner. I'll show you the exciting finish coming up. And let's take a live look outside right now at I-55 at Briarwood Drive. Still dark out there. Few cars on the road on this Labor Day. Brittany Bell has our Labor Day forecast and weather first. And it's shaping up to be a hot and humid day. Right now we have mostly cloudy skies and some areas of patchy fog with temperatures in the low to mid 70s. So it is currently 75 degrees in Jackson, 76 in Vicksburg, and 73 in Macomb. Now we'll see more sunshine looking at a mixture of sunshine and clouds reaching a high of 93 degrees. We'll still have real filled temperatures in the upper 90s. Also this afternoon, we'll see a few scattered showers and storms popping up across central Mississippi, but not expecting anything widespread. I'll let you know what's in store for the remainder of the week coming up. All right, thanks, Brittany. Developing this morning, Jackson police are investigating after a man says he was shot downtown. Police were called to UMMC, but the 43-year-old victim says it happened at Johnny T's Bistro on Ferris Street. They say he was hit twice in one of his feet. Investigators are working to see if the shooting happened at the night spot or nearby. Our crew saw officers talking to a security guard when they arrived on the scene this morning. New overnight Jackson firefighters were definitely laboring on this Labor Day. They were up early trying to put out a house fire. It happened just after 2 on South Sunset Terrace, which runs off Terry Road. They had it put out pretty quickly and say no one was hurt. Atmos Gas Company and investigators were called to the home. A cause of the fire has not been determined. JFD was called to another fire, this one late last night. It was around 1030 on Whitfield off Mill Street. It took firefighters a little over a half hour to put the flames out. No one was hurt, and the cause has not been determined. Well, there was yet another fire over the weekend, this one in Brandon. Just after 2 Saturday afternoon, firefighters were called to Dollar General on Government Street. The building was engulfed in flames when they got there. Smoke from the fire damaged Subway and Ramey Supermarket next door. Dollar General is a total loss. A man recalls the moments he saw the smoke pouring from the roof. It's on fire. I went inside and said, y'all need to call somebody. I said, Dollar General's on fire and walked back outside. I said, it's gone. Initial crews attempted to go inside and actually extinguish the fire, but there was too much fire at the time. A firefighter was taken to a hospital with heat exhaustion. He was treated and released. Investigators are still working to determine the cause of that fire. Well, developing this morning, Ridgeland police are looking for a man who led officers on the chase. They say it was all to dodge a checkpoint on the spillway. Investigators say they went from the spillway up Lake Harbor to Pear Orchard, crossed over into Jackson, hit Old Canton, and went back into Ridgeland. They ended up on Pine Knoll Drive. Ridgeland police say it started when the driver turned around at a checkpoint on the lower spillway and nearly hit an officer. Once they stopped on Pine Knoll, they arrested one of the two men in the car. The search is still on for the second man who ran away. At this hour, a man and woman face a murder charge after a man was found shot, bound, and burned in the Bogachetta River. Authorities say 29-year-old Court Gatlin had been missing for a week before he was found Friday. 25-year-old Anthony Dodden and 26-year-old Bridget Dillon face murder and conspiracy charges. The state medical examiner said in addition to being burned and bound, Gatlin had been shot three times in the head. They deserve to die. Nobody, nobody deserves to die. Not that type of way. It was horrible. From his mouth on up was duct tape. His tie, his hands were tied. His legs were tied. Uh, top of his head had a big hole in it. He had been burnt. I identified my baby's body, and I'm telling you, it wasn't nothing nice. Now, authorities say they expect to make two more arrests. JPD arrested a man who they say tried to rob a gas station. It happened around 3 yesterday afternoon. Officers say 20-year-old Kendarius Harris walked into the shell at Highway 80 and West Haven Boulevard, demanded money, then ran off without any cash. Officers caught him nearby. They also say they found a gun. 
Well, today Ole Miss kicks off their season, and Marcus is here to tell us all about it. Yeah, they do, Aaron, and uh, what a better way to end the hands-down best opening weekend of college football ever. Number 11 Ole Miss taking on Florida State on the national stage. The Rebels coming into the game as underdogs to the Seminoles, but uh, Chad Kelly and crew, they are upset-minded, and they play well on the big stage. Remember, they beat Alabama last year, well, two years in a row now. Kickoff in that game is tonight at 7 p.m. on ESPN. And it was a shocker over the weekend. Mississippi State suffered the biggest upset in college football in five years Saturday. The Bulldogs led 17-0 at halftime but scored just three points in the second half and lost 21-20 after this missed field goal in the end of regulation. Uh, South Alabama celebrated. Cheer up, kid. It should have never come down to that field goal in the first place. All right, uh, Southern Miss took on SEC opponent Kentucky in their first game of the season. Uh, on the first year head coach Jay Hobson, the Golden Eagles overcame an 18 point halftime deficit in the third quarter. All USM was uh, down 35 to 24, and uh, as you can see, they came back to win the game. They go on to pull the upset final score 44 35. Southern Miss beats an SEC opponent for the first time since 2000. And the uh, battle by the beach, All Corn State opening up their season with Bethune Cookman, but uh, weather did not cooperate. Lightning delayed. Del Lays, postponed the game and uh, eventually officials had to call the game off so uh, that game will not count so now the Braves will open up their season this Saturday at home versus Alabama State. All right, so check this out. Last night, uh, you saw the game right here on 16 WAPT, Texas, uh, with a field goal to win it. Well, it got blocked, returned for a touchdown or a, on the other side, two-point conversion. So let's go to the overtime video and uh, show you what happened after that. With the game tied, it goes into overtime, and uh, Texas getting the touchdown to end the game and get the victory 50-47 to over number 10 in Notre Dame. Texas football is back. Hook them horns. All right, uh, switching gears now to the latest on the lawsuit of the uh, city of Jackson and the mayor face, Aaron. Yeah, Marcus, the Jackson City Council is expected to choose an attorney this week to defend against a sexual harassment lawsuit. It was filed against the city and Jackson Mayor Tony Yarber. His former assistant, Kimberly Bracey, says he fired her after she tried to end a sexual relationship with him. The city council made it clear at a meeting last week that they don't want the city attorney's office representing the city in the case. They want their own answers. Until we can get an investigation done, until we can get some independent legal counsel, I can't really comment beyond the fact that this is the process. We're going to get some independent eyes in to investigate and represent the city and follow the process. The city has to file a response to the federal complaint. The city council says it will make its choice by tomorrow. And the city is still trying to figure out how to dig out of a deep budget hole. 28 workers were given notice last week that they could be laid off. City leaders say they have to cut $5 million. They have to have the budget ready by September 13th. And Marcus is back with the tales on one of the top names in NASCAR being off the track. Yeah, that's right, Aaron. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has announced that after missing several races, uh, his 2016 season is now done. The 41-year-old has not raced since July 9th. He says he's had some problems with vision and balance, but is working daily to improve after those concussion-like symptoms that he's uh, suffered after suffering several wrecks during NASCAR season. Earnhardt Jr. says he continues to target 2017 as a return to racing getting normal and just having a good quality of life going forward for the next many 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 years is the first goal and so i haven't you know really put a lot of thought into um into the future until i get well Jeff Gordon and Alex Bowman will split, split driving duties in the number 88 Chevrolet for the rest of the year. And uh, Aaron, uh, we just uh, hope that uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. can get his health uh, and uh, get back on the racetrack. Yeah, definitely want to see him back. Exactly. All right. Thanks, Marcus. Well, the Miss America passion is Sunday. Ahead, we get an update from Miss Mississippi, who's getting ready for the big show. And right now, taking another live look outside, this time at Vicksburg, where you see daylight there. That is from the Convention Center Sky Cam. It is eight minutes after six, everyone, and you're watching 16 WAPT News. This late.